everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I have a heavy, heavy wholesale wool to die for order to open up. And I thought it would be fun to pop on live and show you guys what it is I ordered. Uh, this is not sponsored. I have no affiliation with wool to die for other than being a customer. Um, everything I paid for myself. Um, and I'm really excited. A lot of there's some things that I ordered in here that you've seen me use and dye here on the channel before, but there are some other things that I got as well. When you are a wholesale customer, which means that you're a registered business um, and you set up a wholesale account with Will to Die For, you can get sample skeins of some of their enormous <laughs> yarn base offerings. And so, yeah, so I got some samples and honestly, I forget what I got samples of this time, but yeah, I'm really curious to like feel and try them out. Now you're only supposed to get one like sample per customer. So it's not like I could go and order just two skeins of something. I'm honestly not even sure if I order a sample in one order, if I'd be able to sample that same yarn like years, certainly years later, I'm sure I could, but I don't know about months later. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, but uh, yeah, I feel like it's probably a lot on our system. The one downside with wool to die for is that there is a minimum order. For the wholesale discount, which I think is around 15% off of the retail prices, you have to order at least five kilograms of yarn. Given that a skein of yarn is usually 100 grams, that's like a minimum of 50 skeins of yarn order, which is a lot. Um, so I try, my strategy, and I talk about like my strategy with like nitpicks ordering and stuff sometimes, my strategy is, I mean, obviously if I really need something right now, I will order it now and do a bigger order. But if there's some things that, I've got a list of things that like I want, but I don't need super fast. And so I save that for when I then need to place a bigger order. So that way, rather than like placing smaller orders, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot of blank canvas for more videos. Um, oh, you just watched the four hour live stream. Awesome. Yeah, the recap um, for the mystery color live stream should be coming out later today. I will probably go. I, it's, I've already finished editing and exporting it, and I actually just shipped all of the yarn from it. All the pre-ordered yarn is now at the post office. And so, yeah, I will be uploading that recap uh, later this afternoon. Good evening, everyone. All right, let's open this up. Uh, I know in the description it says it arrived today. It arrived a couple days ago, but I thought it would be fun to pop in and chat. If you guys have any questions about yarn bases, etc., I'm also available to chat about that. Ooh. Ooh. All right, there is a brightly colored invoice on top. Oh, nice, I got a lot of sample skeins. Ooh, I got a lot. So some people, uh, one complaint some people have with like Will to Die For is that you do pay for shipping, but I mean like with them and with Dharma Training Company, yes, there's not like a minimum order for free shipping, uh, which on one hand, is a bummer. On the other hand, like it costs money to ship things. And so like I can understand. And so I factor that into my cost. But just give you guys a little peek. It looks like some of these uh, sample skeins are on top and they're really fun and I am really excited. Okay, let's, oh my gosh, this is so soft. Okay, so this is the Chainette DK Superwash. Let's see if you guys can see. Um, it's 100% Superwash Merino, 273 yards per 100 grams, single in chain construction. This is fluffy and soft and oh, I love chain at yarns. If you watch my other unboxings, you'll know that and obviously Dyer Supplier and Knit Crate, it's like a separate mill. I've enjoyed the Chainette yarns. Um, but this is like a fluffy, fluffy cloud. Um, goodness. So I'm not sure if the samples are full price or if those are discounted at all. 
the chainette on here I have 715 um, so I'm not sure if that's the whole pre wholesale price per skein or not um, but this is oh my goodness it is so so squishy like it's not dense um is it a net with yarn blown in uh no but there are it's so it's a single ply yarn that has been um it's basically a ginormous eye cord um let me see if i can tell how many stitches but so i don't think yeah there's nothing blown in not that i know i don't know if you guys if i'll be able to get it to focus on no stop focusing on me no i can't get it to focus that close um, so there's no, what was it? Knit Picks had, what was it? Momo. They had that, that had some, um, I think there was some fiber like roving in the center of that like knit thing, but this is so unbelievably soft and, oh, it would just add. So because like, because of the chain, I feel like that adds like more stretch and bounce when sometimes with singles you don't get a lot of stretch and bounce and so oh it is so 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 soft um all right another one that i got that i'm really excited about is this one so this is the zebra highland worsted it's 100 percent peruvian highland wool and yeah, you can see that it's this like zebra yarn. I think I over dyed like a lion brand yarn that had like a similar kind of feel. So the the yarn is in some places plied with, well, I don't know if it's gray wool or it's just like a blend of the black and white, but the, there's uh, sort of like a barber pole of a gray and white color of just the bare color on its own and then some black put in. I'm not sure how this one looks knit up. Um, if it's like in like a striping kind of way or what, but this just base just seems so fun and unique. Um, yes, it does look to me like pulling it out. It looks like Scarfy from Lion Brand, which I have over dyed, but Scarfy was only, I think 20% wool. And this is um, 100% wool. Um, it's non superwash. I guess it's DK weight, uh, 100 grams. And so it's a bummer this time. The little label doesn't have any yardage information on it, which I'm a bit bummed about. Uh, this one does. This one doesn't. But I don't know. I I like seeing the samples of things that are very, very different. You guys know I get most of my yarn from Knit Picks, and I am a Knit Picks affiliate, so like I market with them. Um, but I am so f intimately familiar with their yarn bases as just a knitting customer that it was a natural extension. Uh, but it's fun to see things that like, you know, Knit Picks has nothing like either of these in the in the bare lines. Although they do, I think they have like a Twist Hawthorne in the Sock Lab this month. Um, okay, the next, oh, okay, here's a fun one. This is a slub. Um, this is called Superwash Slub. It is 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon. It's a single ply. Why does it say single ply? That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Okay, I can see the label. Uh, come on, can you focus on it? Which is probably backwards to you guys, but it's definitely not single ply unless the second ply is the nylon. And that is a possibility. It's possible that the wool is spun as a single and then the nylon thread is sort of plied around it. Um, but look at these slubs. Like how cute is that? Uh, so let me untwist. Okay, yes. It looks to me, taking a closer look, opening it up and, oh gosh, let me reorder this. Um, it looks to me like it is single ply superwash merino and it is plied with a nylon thread. Um, and so that is where it gets its strength uh, which is nice because otherwise something like this with the slubs, you, I'd worry about the slubs kind of coming apart. 
but it's fun. And so it gives it sort of a boucle-esque feel because you could see that sort of wave because of the, the way that the, the thread and the wool spun together. And I don't know, it's unique. Is it? So I think it's a probably fingering weight. It's 438 yards per 100 grams. Hello, hello. Oh, the label wasn't backwards? Ooh. Because I think YouTube, yeah. So what I see, I'm on my front facing camera on my phone. And so what I see is backwards. Um, but man, if YouTube is figuring that out and like flipping things, I wonder if they do that with, because I don't think they flip my thumbnails though. Um, I think when I film a thumbnail with this, it shows up backwards. Oh, BJ Chadwick, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, the comment reads a little support for all you do. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so glad you guys can tune in and join. Um, and yeah, feel free to drop questions. So basically, this is a big wool to die for order that I placed. It's not sponsored or anything. I just got a lot of different yarn bases that I've never tried before. And so I thought it would be fun to share that with all of you. Um, uh, so I'm not I'm not dying anything today. I'm mostly just unboxing. It is still super heavy. Um, but a little uh, sneak peek. I still have um, some more samples. And by samples, I mean, you pay, I paid for the sample skeins. But when you're a wholesale customer at Will to Die For, you can, if they have it available, you can sample a single skein before you commit to a bag of 10. And so that is nice. And ooh, man, what would I do with this? Okay, so this is called Pure Luxury. This is 50% silk, 50% yak. I couldn't resist. Um, and it is a 50 gram skein, 218 yards per 50 grams. And I think someone asked something about Casa for, and again, I'm not sure. Um, oh, I guess it's not that bad. It's like 825 for 50 grams. I mean, it's sort of double the price of some of the others, but, um, yes, yeah, so wool to die for has a minimum weight for wholesale prices. And, um, it's a five kilogram order, which is equivalent to about 50 skeins. Uh, and to be a wholesale customer, I believe that you have to have a business license. So you need to have a, like a, it's an EIN, which is sort of like a social security number for businesses. It's your federal like identification number. Um, and so they need that. Um, yay, I'm so glad to inspire you to dye yarn. <laughs> It's, I'm always troubled when I'm like, I'm glad I inspired you to die. Like, that sounds so wrong. Um, okay, but so this is 50, 50, 50, 50 yak silk. And I'm not sure if you guys can see. You almost can see that heathered effect. Because the yak must be a much deeper brown. It's showing the color is actually fairly deep. Like, if you compare it to my navy sweater. Um, but... I think that the silk could pick up some more color because the silk seems paler in the blend. I think it would be really fun. Whatever you over dye this could feel like very like deep um, and pretty. This will uh, pick up pigment. Um, this is like a bear yarn supply company for dyers. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited. I think this will make a fun video. Well, I got... Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to sample this and this and this and this and this. And then like, <laughs> I forgot what I sampled. Um, okay, so this is the silk sock. Why? That is so funny. Um, what's really funny about this is the, I just, I don't think I remembered that I ordered this because I had some. This is silk sock 50-50. And I literally just dyed this yarn on the last live stream because I had a long, long time ago, I got a sampler pack. Oh gosh, this was back even before when we still lived in Illinois. I bought a sampler trio from Wool to Die For and they had three sock yarns. I think it had an MCN, it had maybe Sheila's Gold and it had the silk sock. And so I had it and um, I just dyed that. And so now I have another skein which is hilarious because I loved how it died up, but I think that I didn't put the two and two together uh, when I grabbed that, that I had it 
like on its way also. So that is a little fun tidbit. What are you? Ah, here's something people have been asking about. This yarn is wool cotton four ply fingering. It is 50% superwash merino, 50% cotton. And I would say it feels like cotton to me. Um, I wonder if the wool will give it a little more memory than just cotton alone would have. But I've had a lot of questions about dyeing wool, co wool cotton blends. And so figured it would be fun to give it a try. The hard thing is that for a lot of these, like, I wish that I had more than one skein, but I don't really want 10, if that makes sense. Like, I would love to um, take this and be like, ooh, let's try, like, a bunch of different techniques. Let's do side by side. It would be fun to try with, like, acid dyes and tie dye and fiber, you know, that you could see in like the dye powder that there's like a little tableau that you could do of all these different dye types just to see how, how the effects differ. Pardon me. Thank you. I know there's a person outside. How dare they walk down the street? Um, Oh, I could convert it to mini skeins. So it's, that's actually like a good idea. That's a really good idea. Um, so like I'm always, here's the thing with like converting yarn to minis and one reason why I now do more full skeins. Um, so I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where I sell the yarn that I dye. And so now that, that, source of revenue for this business has allowed me to do more full skeins and videos versus breaking them down to minis because um you know it's it it all sort of like comes together but yeah it makes more sense than me ordering a 10 pack which seems like outrageous for something that i'm not sure i would die a ton of uh, that makes sense a lot <laughs> and i can't believe i didn't think of it um all right who are you you are Sheila's Titanium. Oh, yes. Ooh. Okay. This is, oh, I like this. So Sheila's Titanium is a two-ply. I wouldn't necessarily call it a high twist, but it's maybe higher twist than Platinum Sock. Um, it's two-ply. Oh, it does say it's two-ply on here. Huh. Um, it's 463 yards per 100 grams. So it's the same yardage i think almost exactly the same yardage as sheila's gold but it's a little different i am very excited if you are a chemnitz patron already then you know that i am about to start working on a comparison of the 75 25 sock yarn and i'm really excited that there's one that's a little different because knit picks has four four ply 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon sock yarns four of them Four. That's a lot. <laughs> and so I just, you know, want to take a look at all of them and see like which ones um, I prefer. This is really soft though. Really, really soft. I think it might be, I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's it might be slightly more expensive, but again, I don't know if I get wholesale price or not on the sample skeins. So my guess would be not, but I don't know because sample skeins are only available to wholesale customers. But um, yeah, I am excited and I'm going to set that aside because that is earmarked. Um, all right, we got one more sample. Ah, okay, so this is Bamboo Two Step. This is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Bamboo. Uh, so yeah, which means that likely then would be... I don't know. Or visco, probably like viscose from bamboo. So this is sort of a different, so Galileo that I dye is 50% merino, 50% bamboo. But I was curious uh, to see, and I was looking at their like protein plant blends. You have a handful of blend that you are apprehensive to dye. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that if you wanted, I think the best bet for a wool plant blend would be to go with fiber reactive dyes. Um, 
I think that that is the best bet. Or if you're going for like a solid, you could do it in like a two-step process maybe. Uh, but that is something that I will play around with. You're not wholesale and you can get sample skeins. Hmm. There are a few sample packs sometimes of three available, but they do say like if I'm not logged in to my wholesale account, then I don't see the like tab of samples. Um, that only showed up when in the after, to me after I converted to wholesale, but who knows, maybe they've changed it. Because honestly, it makes sense because then you can figure out what you love. And like, I really like Sheila's Titanium. Like it's, so I love Knit Picks Hawthorne and it is, this is like a different, this reminds me of Hawthorne, maybe not quite as high twist, maybe a tiny bit thinner. Um, but it is super soft, so I'm a fan. All right, so I got some more Platinum DK and Platinum Soft mini stains. Did I just do? Okay, so these are technically micros because they're um, 10 grams each. And then I got a bunch of, let's see, that's Sock, Sock, DK, That's just lint, DK. Um, so, yeah, you're getting started and you're looking to getting a standalone gas burner for dyeing. I don't have any recommendations for a standalone gas burner. I have a standalone electric burner, which I have like a love-hate relationship with. I like it because it's standalone and I can move it outside, which it's great when I want to do a technique that is outside. It's re I really appreciate having that. I don't love it because it takes forever to heat up and then forever to cool off. Um, so yeah, if if I liked it a lot better than what my current setup, then I would honestly probably shift to doing more stuff on the countertop versus on the stove because if I was on my island, then I could have the camera on one side and me on the other and that would be great. <laughs> Although my kitchen is, small enough that like I don't think I'd be able to get the counter and me in frame. Um, that's green for Sunday. Right, I grabbed a few more double knit sock links. I think I have a bunch of, of the like knit picks ones, but I grabbed some. Maybe I meant to save these for later, but I grabbed some so I have some more. Um, oh, maybe, wait, did I use a bunch of blanks recently? I guess I hadn't yet, but I wanted to have some just in case. Okay, cute. <laughs> I needed more platinum sock. Um, so my go-to 7525 is Knit Pick Stroll. I love it. It is one of the yarn bases I know the best. I know how it's going to react in a lot of situations. And so that's why I like using it when I'm doing something new or experimental. Um, platinum sock is very, very similar. I don't think I could even say Ooh, I like one better than the other. They're like, even the yardage. So platinum is 463 yards per 100 grams. Knit Pick Stroll is 462 yards per 100 grams. So they're very, very, very close. Um, but I needed some of this for my 75-25 video. And in fact, grabbing a skein right now. Now, one other thing I do like about Platinum Sock is that you can get it in the sock lengths. You can get it in micro and mini skeins. You can get it um, in super long six yard skeins. You can get it in um, single stranded blanks as well. And so there's like all those different options. You might even be able to get it in 150 gram skeins. And so I appreciate that there's so many ways that I can get the same yarn base to play with. Um, and it's the same, which was handy when I did samplers. Um, ooh, that's a great question. I seem quite open to trying different bases, but is there any type you don't like to use? <sighs> that's a really, really good question. And as I mull, oh, Suzanne, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I really appreciate it. Um, gosh, so there's definitely, so this one's kind of weird. So Knit Picks palette is a favorite of mine to knit with. It's 
a uh, two-ply uh, Peruvian Highland wool. It's very lofty. And it's the first 100% wool yarn I dyed. I use it in color work. It is perfect for color work. I love it. And I, like my favorite mittens and hat are all in that base. It isn't my favorite to dye because it looks not like, because of the halo, it doesn't necessarily felt, but it gets sort of like stuck to itself. And so, yeah, I don't love like the way that it, looks without reskating. And so therefore it's not one of my favorites to dye because I don't want to have to reskein it. Um, and so I don't use it as often as I used to, even though it is one of my favorite yarns to knit with. And I probably have, oh gosh, I must have over 60 balls of palette in various colors in my house right now. I have a sweater kit that Someday I will get to um, a very complicated Fair Isle sweater kit. Um, I have that, and so that's like a bunch of skeins. And then I have um, uh, the some of their kits used to go on really, really deep clearance sales. And so I would, if I liked the colors and it was a yarn base I use a lot, I would buy the kits, not for the pattern, but for the yarn. And so I have, yeah, I have a big palette stash. Um, yeah, and I guess others like, when I started dyeing yarn, I liked wool acrylic blends because that's like what I had access to. I don't love those as much anymore. Um, you can still get really pretty color on them. They definitely melt a little bit in the process with that acrylic. And the thing that kind of is a bit of a bummer to me, like when we talked about Scarfy, I was so excited, but the colors on that were even more muted than I'm used to seeing with wool acrylic blends, maybe because of the way that it was spun, but I was a bit bummed. So it's not my favorite. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. Like I, I genuinely enjoy a lot of the skeins that, that I've dyed, but I think the ones that I, yeah, I guess I'm not sure why, like the, like Wool of the Andes I used a ton, and so that's why it's like one of my staples. Um, but I definitely like to try new things because, well, I guess my whole channel is about trying new things. So uh, therefore, like I will try anything a lot of the time. I'm willing to experiment. All right, so the last thing I got, and this was something that I had a sample of, and now I bought a full bag of. So yay, hopefully they... Uh, are happy with me about that but this is shimmer fingering this yarn is 90% superwash merino 10% lurex and it is really really pretty um and i'm actually about to dye some for a video which is why i ordered a 10 pack um this is one of the yarn bases that i considered for the uh, Chemnitz, like the, the Chemnitz Hanukkah sparkle colorway. Uh, let me show you. Wait. Oh, this, I think the, um, yeah, so it's basically a two ply yarn plied with this silver thread. Um, and so unlike other Stellina bases, the, the Lorex sort of pops a bit and you can really, really see it, um, but which is good and bad. So it means that if you're doing a colorway with really subtle speckles, um, the, the Lorex will shine through because like if I were to dye this black, then it would be a black yarn with that silver popping through it. And that would be beautiful. It'd be really, really beautiful. But if I was, when I was doing the bright blue with navy speckles, you didn't really feel that neat, the speckles anymore because the sort of speckle from that silver popping through really dominated the colorway. Um, which, I mean, the speckles, it's still a pretty yarn. It's just, I wanted the speckles to like I wanted it to sparkle, but I wanted those speckles to kind of shine through. Um, so it's a fun, but it's still like a fun base and I want to play with it more. So that's why I ordered a bag. 
And let me see. Uh, yeah, so it is definitely more expensive uh, <laughs> um, than some others, but not like outrageously so. Uh, but I, I really like it. And uh, the first time, the first time I dyed something like this is Knit Picks has a Lorex blend um, called Alux. And is there some alpaca in it too, maybe? I know, don't remember the full blend, but I speckled that but left it white. And that was so cool because you could see the silver kind of like pop through that blue. And so I was like, oh my goodness, I'm really excited to play with it. So yeah, there's, I have, so I have a project in mind where I was going to dye some, but I'm also like, okay, but I could do this technique or this technique. And I'm torn, you guys, I am torn. And so that is hard. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to decide, but I have 10, so I have some that I don't do now, I can do later. The one thing I don't know what to do, uh, because I'd like to, it, so the thing that I struggle with is that when I am doing a video of a technique and I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, I typically want to do a yarn base that I know really well like Stroll or Wool of the Andes or something, because I've dyed those skeins so many times that I know, like, I know something, like, if something is confusing, it's probably about the technique, the conditions, the dye type, etc. If I was going to go and try, like, a brand new type of dye that I've never tried before on a skein of yarn that I'm not super familiar with how it could come together, then... You know, it's like I didn't control properly, <laughs> right? Uh, so that's something that I have this collection of other bases that I don't dye as often, which I'd like to. Um, I just, yeah, I hope that this makes some sense. <laughs> uh, so I, like, I struggle because I want to, like, do a comparison, uh, like a full comparison and compare and contrast how different things work. Um, but, you know, then sometimes I'm also like, okay, Rebecca, just get over it and just dye the yarn and have some fun. <laughs> so there is that as well. But I do enjoy, like, in the, in most of my live streams for, like, the Chemnitz Dialogue live streams, I try to pull in a yarn base that isn't one that I've used a ton. Um, one that or sometimes it might be one that I've just used more rarely or something, but I try to pull something in just so that way we can like see and see how it does and see like what we think about it. But gosh, I, and honestly, sometimes I pull, I have a whole private Pinterest board of inspiration photos for the dialogues. And I, sometimes I'll look through like my stash and see what I have and maybe what I haven't used. And sometimes like looking at a yarn base, then I might look at a photo and be like, ooh, the base fits with that photo in like a nice, fun way. And so, okay, maybe I should go that direction. Um, and so I really try to let the photos like inspire the, the base that I'm picking. They inspire the like the technique that I choose. Uh, so I try to go like in <laughs> on the photos with inspiration. But yeah, I'm very excited to have these other bases, like this one. Like, I mean, I'm sure it would be so cool. I don't know what I would make with this kind of yarn. Hmm. I don't know, but it's just fun to have something a little different and to mix up my experimentation a little bit. Uh, I especially really love when I do things side by side in a pan and get to see like the differences between them because there it's not, if it's a little immersion, it's not that one yarn is absorbing more color than the other. It can be more about that they absorbed it differently. Whereas if I had a pot and I was gonna go kettle dye and I put, for example, if I put the, or if I put the 50-50 cotton yarn and like a superwash, is this one superwash? Yeah, and a superwash merino in the same pot at the same time, 
the superwash wool one is going to absorb a lot more color so it's not the same comparison it would be better to have them in separate pots because if one's going to absorb color faster then it'll absorb more than the other one can even if the other one maybe could absorb just the same amount of color but then look more muted so that those are things that like i try to consider when i'm designing these videos uh so a lot of like planning and thought goes into them but we have a lot of fun um you would make a shawl out of the slub oh it'd be really pretty as a top um yeah nubby yarn i think also would be pretty difficult to do with crochet but it depends on how loose if it was really loose and lacy then it wouldn't be hard but anyway that is my wool to die for yarn haul i mean i think that they definitely have one of the most extensive collections of bear yarn bases out there um but again like this isn't sponsored i don't know anything about them like personally or anything what i know is just that as a customer but uh i like well i like that i can buy mini skeins <laughs> that's the that's a big thing that keeps me uh, keeps me coming that I can get mini skeins, um, but I I think the one of all of these I mean I'm excited about the zebra yarn this is fun um, it could be fun to do this for like yeah I mean this is just a fun fun yarn um, but this chainette has me like real excited it is so. Fun. Fluffy, oh, and but oh, I guess it says it's DK. Um, it doesn't look DK. It definitely looks more worsted. But I think that because as you knit, it sort of compresses a bit. That makes it more DK. Do more snow and ice dyeing. I would do some more snow dyeing, but the weather has not cooperated with us this year. Um, we have not had a large snowfall in a little while um and so yeah i would definitely do some more snow dyeing if we had more snow but i will and then for ice dyeing i will probably try to wait more for the summer again so i can do it outside um but yeah it's like snow yeah it was on one of the like when i was waiting for snow last year that i ended up freezing the yarn inside ice <laughs> Oh, that was funny. I was like, oh, it's snowing. The snow can just fall on top of it. And I'm like, and it's raining. The yarn is wet. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, so videos, like, sometimes I go into a video and I have, like, a plan. And then sometimes where I end up is nothing like what that plan was. But a lot of times I do like to let the materials and the colors that are happening speak to me. Um, and, yeah. Uh Wait, Jason, where are you? What what state? Six to 14 inches? I'm like, it's almost 50 degrees outside here right now. Um, I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, in Colorado? Okay. Um, <laughs> I panicked briefly. I was like, that would change a lot of plans <laughs> if it, we were gonna get that much snow because I would end up in a snow day. Hello, hello. It was 72 degrees yesterday, wow. We went skiing up in New Hampshire and they had a bunch of snow up there, but we've had really cold weather, but anytime we've gotten any real like moisture fall, uh, it's been rain or like, sleet. And so that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, this was my yarn haul. Uh, lots of, lots of new bases to try. I now have a bin for yarn that I only have one of each one for. <laughs> Um, and I mean, my house is covered on yarn. Like, I really, like, I'm anticipating my need of mini skeins, so I got some because I'm out. But, like, I really, <laughs> what I really needed this time is I needed these 7525s. Oh, this titanium is phenomenal. I will be ordering that in the future. Mark my words. But I guess one other thing I'll show you guys is I am finally getting Lucas's new hat. Um, I started this yesterday. Uh, and Oh, wow, on camera, you can actually see the like, the the color work thing pretty well. The colors are so the differences are so subtle, that it almost like, 
like feels more like the fade that the ombre hat is named for. This one is my pattern. Um, and I debated between doing different things, but one reason why I love the ombre hat is, um, I mean, I designed it, so of course I love it, but I love it because the floats are all so regular. Like every row is, it just, they start different, but it's like knit three one color, knit one the other color around, and it's just swapping the order of that and then the order of the colors. But you get this like almost double layer of fabric because of the floats, and so then it's super warm. And so that's why I decided to go this way. And so Lucas, not on camera because we had other kids there, but so Lucas died this year in the summer and I wanted to blend it with something because I don't know, I wanted something a little, with a bit more color for his winter hat. Um, and then uh, I dyed this like orange, it's a very subtle gradient. Um, but you can see that it is like, paler at one end than the other. Um, I bet you need an air filter, all the fiber in the air. <laughs> um, I mean, we have like, our HVAC system has a filter, but I think our the bigger issue from versus all the yarn is the dog, <laughs> probably, who is a fluff ball. And someday I will convert his luscious warm coat into some yarn. Uh, we've been saving it up, but I need to, I need to learn to blend. Uh, to do that but anyway this is the colorway that i started uh the the hat that i started and i'm actually now curious it's like i'm on camera uh oh good i was like trying to knit it a bit tighter because he's been wearing keith's hat which is big on me um but yeah i think it's cute and subtle and includes like this the one the kid dyes so much yarn and doesn't want to part with any of it um uh but I've been trying to tell him, I was like, listen, Lucas, if you want to dye some yarn that you don't want to hold on to in your own private stash, um, you know, I would put like, I was like, I will put money in your savings account and then you can have some money in your piggy bank. Um, but you know, he wants to keep it. And so I'll let him keep it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. And he dyed that with food coloring and I used acid dyes for the orange one. And this will, when it's done, it will be part of a video. So when I dyed this yarn, um, I like filmed it and it, there, there's the intent to have the finished garments at the end of that video. It just has been sitting waiting for me to start knitting for longer than I care to say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that is the, my like current uh, work in progress and I thought it was fun to you know I just wanted to mark the first stitch the, the this progress keeper is a little small for the needles that I was using but it's a Lego one that I got from Par the Paradise Fiber sent me in one of their Fiber of the Month clubs um, oh I think that was the month that I was featured in um, from the Yellow Brick Road the like Wizard of Oz one and so yeah I thought it's appropriate for my son to use the Lego one but when I made him try it on he's like why is there a Lego on my hat mommy <laughs> but anyway, oh, ooh, I could stick like mini figures on it. Mm. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna get to. Uh, well, I certainly have some video ends to film, and I'm not sure. Maybe I'll save some of the dyeing tomorrow. I want to. It's always a bigger. It's a bigger ordeal when I want to do dye with like dry powders and stuff in the kitchen because there's a lot. I take. Bigger, per I take big precautions when I use commercial dyes anyway. Like I do a lot of cleaning and flop over, but I guess the like, yeah, I try it. It's just a lot more because I need like the mask and all that stuff um, when I'm dealing with powders and I have some powder techniques I want to do. But anyway, all right. So let me know in the comments what techniques you would like to try on a Lurex blend like this one, um, even though this is probably what I'm not filming it today. I will be filming one on this tomorrow. And yeah, I hope that you guys are all having a great day. And thank you for popping on and hanging out while I unboxed all, all of this yarn. Uh, now I just need to figure out where I'm going to put it. We still have to secure my really big shelf to the wall. And so then I can finish film, filling it up. But it's already feeling mostly full. So there's that. But anyway. Uh, yeah, again, thanks for tuning in, and I will chat with all of you soon. Bye, everyone!